legs. He's writing this from a place where he should not be happy. From a dark cell, a hard place. And he's saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And just in case you didn't hear me, he yells it at you. Then he goes on to say this. Now, this is the type of attitude that will get you through things. Whatever you're going through, tell the person next to you, say, whatever you're going through, this is your remedy. (laughs) This is what you need. Let your gentleness. Now, when you feel like being angry, switch it on the devil. Let your gentleness be evident to who? So, in other words, when you're going through it, smile. Be nice. Be gentle because the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. So get off your anxiety pills. (laughs) But in everything, by prayer and petition. Now, this is the important thing you have to remember. Prayer and petition. But then it talks about an attitude after that. When you go and give your prayer and your petition, you got to do it with thanksgiving. So it talks about an attitude of how we give our prayer and our petition. Present your request to God. And then it talks about the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Let me explain that to you. The peace of God will transcend your situation. In other words, it'll change things. When you pray with the right attitude, when you act in the right way, everything changes your situation doesn't have to change. It transcends you to. Uh, I don't, you're going to understand me in a minute. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And it tells us how to think after that. Finally, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, where they think about such things. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your spirit that I feel here already. Use me today as your vessel. I pray you touch your people in Jesus' name. Amen. The enemy's after you. Tell the person next to you the thief is after you. It's not a question of if he likes you or not. A matter of fact, you got to be careful. Even if you're, even if you're not saved and you're here, he has your name on his tablet now. You might as well jump in and get in where you fit in because he knows you're close. If you're in this room tonight on a rainy day, that means you want your life to get better. And you know who the source is to get it there. That means that somebody in this place has got to know that the thief is against you. The devil, the enemy, he's real and he don't like you. He's after you. So what is he after? He's after what we just talked about, your joy. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to... He's a thief. That means this. That means you don't know that he came in. He'll take it, and you didn't even know it's missing. Any thieves in the building? Ex-thieves, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe one or two. <laughs> Any ex, ex-thieves? If you're a good one, then you were able to take things that no one knew that was you that took it. And These days, you can put on the internet and just get rid of it like no problem. You don't have to have a fence these days. But he's a thief. He'll rob you before you even realize it. You're not smiling no more. You're not happy no more. Your personality changes and you don't have no joy no more. And the only smile that you have is a fake smile. I'm not saying don't wear it. Just saying work on it, that's all. I believe in fake smiles, I I do. I give them all the time. Hey, sometimes it's not easy to smile through some things. But you better believe I'm not letting the devil see me frown. 
I think what confuses the enemy most is when you should be down. But you're holding your head up. Because you know you serve a faithful God that will never, never leave you and never forsake you. You want to put the devil in a whirlwind of wonder. Smile right now. Come on, get good at it. Smile right now. Even if it hurts, smile. Give it, look at the person next to you. Smile at them. So he comes to still kill, destroy. He comes out for your joy first. Wants to take away that nice Colgate smile. Whatever type of color it is, it's up to you. I don't know. <laughs> He's trying to rob you of it. Wants to take away that happy, joyful personality that I saw up here at the altar. Wants to change your moods and make you a, a moody roller coaster. The storms are going to come. Life is not always going to be easy, and the Lord will allow them to come. Don't lose your smile no matter what comes your way. Don't lose the joy of the Lord. Happiness is nice, but joy, we have joy anytime we want to put it on. Happiness can change at times. Happiness comes when people are nice to you sometimes. But joy will be there when they're not nice to you. But it's up to us to put it on. Just like you put on the shirt you put on. Dress, blouse, whatever you're wearing. Joy, it's something that you put on. So that's why I say sometimes it's not going to look as normal. But you got to look at yourself in the mirror before you leave your house every day. Don't you? Do you cut, kill me here? You do the whole thing, right? Okay, start looking at yourself and add this to the list. Put your smile on too. Put a smile on your face, look at it in the mirror, and make sure it's not crooked. <laughs> and if it is, work on it. Because there's nothing worse than having a household with a moody person in it. That's supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, supposed to be on fire for God, and all they do is walk around with a grumpy grin. I know life hurts sometimes. But rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice, 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 and rejoice again. So he's after your joy. And he's after your salvation. See, a lot of times people get hit in the joy area. And then he's after your next, he's after your salvation. So he could take away your joy. In other words, let's put it this way. If you're not happy right now, you chose that. If you're not excited about being here tonight, I'll tell you this. This atmosphere, you chose to be grumpy. Because this atmosphere, this atmosphere, you cannot come in an atmosphere like this. You look grumpy. You chose that. You that was a choice. But when you walk in this place with an atmosphere like this, all that grumpiness should be gone immediately. You choose to put on the joy of the Lord. And immediately things begin to change. All of a sudden you get your breath back. All of a sudden you want to lift your hands a little higher. All of a sudden, you feel like throwing them hands up all the way. All of a sudden, tears might be coming to your, your face. Why? Because the anointing of the Lord is here. And when you choose to not let the devil have what is yours, then you find the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Takes out your joy, he got your strength, and then he has your salvation. You better be careful how long you stay grumpy. Be careful how long you let a grudge last. Be careful how long you don't like that brother, that sister, that leader. That The enemy is after you and the thief has robbed your house. 
You've been robbed. Check it. Take inventory. You have beef with somebody in this place. You chose the wrong way to live. Rejoice in the Lord always. I got to hurry. We got to learn how to win the battle of discouragement and defeat. Best way I know is to trust that I got joy like a river. And it comes from God. No matter what I go through, I got to remember that he's still with me. Because he promises he'd never leave me, he'd never forsake me. So I got to learn how to put on a happy face. So do you. Don't let the enemy see you sweat. Don't let the enemy see you fret. <laughs> I could keep on going with rhymes right now. <laughs> I was going to say, don't let the enemy get you in debt. <laughs> There's so much that God has for us if we learn how to rejoice in him. The battle's won. All we got to do is stand. That's all we have to do and trust him. Now, Matthew 14, 22, I want to read it real quickly because this is a place when you talk about storms, we're all going to go through them. We're all going to face them. But this is one of the greatest storms I've ever seen. But it causes a shift to take place, which I feel like is happening here. Storms could sometimes be the best thing in the world for you. Matthew 14, I think you guys put it up there, so I'm going to leave my notes. Could you put it up there for me? 14, there it is. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the multitudes and sent them away. After he had sent them, the multitudes away, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves because the wind was contrary. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him, somebody said they saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Somebody in your Bible said they were terrified. Terrified. Matter of fact, they said, it's a ghost. And they cried. Grown men cried, dude. There's not no girls in this boat. Sorry, ladies, but still. Some of you are tougher than the dudes, you know what I mean? Is that just in Northern Cal or is that here too? <laughs> Some of the women know how to go through stuff better than the men do. They know how to hold it down and stay put and let go. Oh, I don't know if I'm going there, but. <laughs> if it hurts, ouch, sorry. But these men cried out in fear. Now. When you're going through it, you're going to feel like doing this many times. Tell the person next to you, say, stop crying. It's all going to be a workout. The disciples saw him. Hear me. Hear what God is saying. He saw him, and then they cried. It's a ghost, they said. Because it couldn't be him in their mind. Because they were stuck in the natural and Jesus was in the. If you're still crying after a service like this, you're stuck in the natural when Jesus is already here in the. Stop crying. It's not going to be bad. It's all going to work out. Yeah. Disciples saw him. It's, they cried out. But immediately, say immediately. immediately. This is how quick your tears can turn to joy. Immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Now, I'm going to say it again and again until you get this. It's telling us in the storm. Be of what? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me just set this in real quick. We're talking about how to get through storms fast and get them 
get through them faster or better or take you through this thing the right way. You don't want it to last forever. Or if it's lasting forever, you don't want to fill it forever. It's telling him, be them what? What's he telling? Same thing Apostle Paul's saying. Rejoice, man. Get happy. It's me. That's what he's saying to them. He's saying, get rid of the fear. Because the fear is killing faith. And it's robbing you of stepping into the unknown. The unknown is what you need to know. Peter answered him. He says, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. I'm going to say it again. Be of good cheer. Tell the person next to you, be of good cheer. Of good cheer. It is Jesus. Do not be afraid. <laughs> Tell him again. It is Jesus. Jesus. Smile. Smile. Don't be afraid. Tell him again on the other side. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Jesus, is Jesus is here. Do not be afraid. Not be afraid. We do one more time for the person behind you. Tell him real quick. Be of good cheer and then smile. Ha, ha, ha. Jesus is here. Do not be afraid. I can feel fear leaving the building right now. I can feel disease running. I can feel sickness getting out of here. I felt depression just leave. I don't know if you felt that, but I felt it. I know that if you could just smile and trust that God is here, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how bad it seems. God is in this place. And if Christ is for us, who? Christ is for us. You tell me who. Just saying that stuff should have changed your attitude. Cool thing is you already got a good one right now. So now we can actually step into the supernatural much faster this way. Sounds like they got the good cheer already. Tell the brother, ha, 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 I got it. I got the joy of life. Now, this is the part I like. Now, you recognize this. Jesus sent them into the storm. It was a God-induced storm. Your storm just might be that too. Could be one of three things. Could be God sent. Could be your own doing. Most of them are your fault. My fault. You know what I mean? We do all, we mess, make our own messes, man. I mean, and then there's some that we all get the most credit. The devil did it, right? That devil. Stop saying it's a devil. You give him props for things he did not deserve. <laughs> he gets so much credit for things, man. If you're in it, learn how to get through it. This is going to help you get through it. I'm only going to preach for about seven more minutes or so. Hear what I'm saying. God is looking at a few things when we're in the storm. Okay? One thing he's looking at, he wants to see, I, I call them the, the four A's you can even put. Okay? I'm going to give them to you real quick. He's looking at, he wants our attention first. So when you go through a God-sent storm, He's trying to get your attention. Actually, any storm, this applies, this applies to. Whether it's your fault, the devil made you do it, or the devil did it, or God did it. He's looking to get your attention. In other words, when you look in the army and they tell you, stand at attention. You have to put your shoulders back, get your head up, and get ready to listen to something, right? He wants your attention. Tell the person next to you, say, Attention. He'll get your attention whether you realize it or not. You might have to go to jail to get it. <laughs> you might get arrested, but he will get your attention. He's trying to get it tonight, so that way you don't have to go in the belly of the whale. Jonah. Number two, he wants our attitude. We already talked about be of good cheer, right? 
So even if you're going through it, we got to have the right attitude. Of, smile. He's with you. Don't have attitude with each other. He's with you. Stop talking about him. Let God deal with it. You don't need to tell on him. God will discover it. God will take care of business. Whatever your attitude is, don't let what happens around you get in you. You can't change people, man. God does that. The Holy Spirit. You can pray for them, but you're letting them take away your joy and letting them take away your faithfulness. And That's not the right way to go. So your storm could last longer if your attitude is not right. Then, check this one out. He also is looking for anticipation. He wants to see if you're looking for him or not. He wants to see if you're still expecting him to do something. Now, I like expectation in the Bible because you know what it does? When you look at expecting people, no matter what they're going through, it literally talks about even, even uh, Acts chapter 3. You know that one where... where, where Peter and John going up to the temple, and then they get the guy to start expecting to get something from them. It actually, that expectation, it's also in, in, in the Gospels, too, where it talks about the expectation of somebody being on their tippy toes. Waiting in expectation with arms lifted. That type of expectation, knowing that I'm not, he's not going to leave me through this thing, but I'm anticipating him to come through. I know God is near. I know I'm going through it, but I'm sure he is close by. I've got to anticipate him doing something in the atmosphere. Don't know where you are, Lord, but I'm hearing you. See, if the guys were anticipating, they would have known when he said, hey, they saw him before he spoke. It'll happen that way sometimes. But you're going to find this happening to you. He's going to look to see, do you believe that I'm going to come through for you? I want to know before I show. I want to know that you are not going to doubt me. I want to see the attitude knowing that I have your back. I didn't put you in this situation to leave you. So you might not feel me yet. You might feel the storm more than me. You might feel the waves. You might feel the air. You might feel the rain. You might feel the boat rocking. You might even feel seasick. But don't doubt that God is going to come through. Get on them tippy toes. Throw your hands in the air. Wave them around like you know he's there. Oh, come on. I'm rapping up here. I don't know what's up here. It's your church, dude. This is, the, this is the church. You're bringing this out of me. I don't know where, why, how. I'll never do that. The spirit of Pastor Andre just hit me right now. <laughs> I told you I'm going to be done in a couple minutes. I got to hurry up. Listen, not only does he want your anticipation, not only does he want your attention, your attitude, but check this one out. He's waiting to see what type of action you'll take. <sighs> what are you going to do from here? It's not good enough just to sit there in the boat when Jesus is in the supernatural. <sighs> now, this is where it gets scary for a lot of people, and this is why i got to finish. But hear me, hear me, hear me good. The supernatural is a little bit weird. For those of you that aren't used to it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's that many of you anymore because it feels like there's a lot of you that are you're already in the flow of it. Especially if you're here tonight. But, 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 but just in case if you're not, maybe you're new. You're going to have to get used to this. When the supernatural becomes your natural... That's a deadly, on fire, radical, I mean devil stomping type of Christian that will 
prevail and you will have action no matter what you're going through. Don't stop believing. You ever hear that song? Don't just stop not believing, but you got to keep on moving. Tell the person, say, keep on moving. Keep on going. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Stay involved. You might be going through it. You're going to get through it. What type of action are you taking? Now, listen, after you hear this sermon, you're going to be held accountable. Because now you can't say you didn't hear it. If you set yourself down, get yourself back up. Hurry up. You don't throw in your own towel. Fighters don't throw in their own towel. You can't throw in your own towel. You can't say, time out. When it's time for the towel to be thrown in, Pastor L, Pastor Miller, one of the leaders will let you know. They'll throw in the towel for you. But your action in the storm is what God's looking at. Now, you also have to be honest with them, though. I'm not saying just keep on doing it even if you have issues. Okay, don't misunderstand. But God is looking for your action. Now, hear me in this, or I'm going to finish. Supernatural feels different. I used to be, when I was a kid, Regina probably could feel the same type of thing. Like, when I'd invite friends to school, like, remember when I went to that little white school before I met you? <laughs> no offense, Professor Gary. <laughs> or any other, any other boy. <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. Hear me. I, we went to like an all white school, which is little yuppie kids, cool kids, though. And we used to take them to our ghetto church at the time it was in East LA. And we used to have this white church. And I remember taking one of my little white friends that had never been to a Pentecostal church. And we would sit next to my mom. And my mom, she's one person that doesn't have no problem praising the Lord. I didn't mind that. She sings pretty good. But didn't she sing louder? She used to sing louder than anybody else in the church. She would be in the third row, and you could hear her from anywhere. <laughs> and I was cool with that because she sounded pretty. And then after that, she would lift up her hands and really go for it. And then I would look at my friends thinking, I wonder how they're feeling about this. <laughs> but it really got me worried when she started Speaking in tongues. I'm all, not that, Mom. Not today. Not today. Come on, Holy Spirit, stop. <laughs> but before you knew it, in an atmosphere like this, she didn't care who was there. No matter what she was going through, didn't matter what she was feeling, those hands went up, and you better believe I used to remember her starting to speak in tongues and la da 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 oh, so loud. And I remember looking at my buddy and him going, dude, what language is that? Is that Spanish? Oh, yeah, dude, it's Spanish. That's what it is. <laughs> now hear me. <laughs> Understand what I'm saying? It was awkward at first. When you hear people speaking, sha la da 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 ba ba ba. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a strange language, I know. But don't knock it until you try it. Now, understand what I'm saying here. Hold on. If you want to get through the storm the right way, your action from this point is going to matter. I dare you to try jumping into the supernatural because you heard the voice of God. It, it is I. Be of good cheer. Do not be afraid. I am with you. If he's with you, Remember 
of this. Listen, if you know he's with you, be careful what type of prayers you're praying. If you know he's with you, stop praying for the storm to stop. Some of you are praying for the storm to stop. What you should be praying is, Jesus, can I get closer to you in the storm? Come on, clap your hands. If you know he's here, if you know he's with you, stop asking for the storm to stop and ask to get closer to him in the storm. Someone clap your hands. Clap them, clap them, clap them. Let him know you're not just going to sit there no more. You're not just going to kick it, but you're down.